The following is a reading from George Harrison's book, I, Me, Mine, and is in regards to when the Beatles played Manila. They took us right off the plane, these huge guys, no smiles, white shirts, short sleeves, and then immediately confiscated our diplomatic bags and took just the four of us, John, Paul, Ringo, and me, without Brian or Neil or Mal, and then removed us to a boat in Manila Bay surrounded by a ring of cops, guns everywhere, and for the first time ever, no Neil, no Mal. God, what do we do now? It was a terrible tropical heat, and straight away we thought we were all busted because we always carried our hand luggage with us with our shaving gear, cigarettes, and various other things. We thought that we'd go right through it, find our stuff and our bags, and there we were on this boat in this cabin surrounded by cops. So depressing. It lasted two and a half hours, and then Brian Epstein arrived, going mad, demanding that they let us off, and finally they did so and put us in our hotel. More guns. Everywhere we looked, guns. We don't know why they took our bags. We don't know why they took us off the plane, or why they put us on the boat. No one would explain anything. This crazy security thing, just the four of us with nobody. It was the first time we had ever been cut off from Brian and our roadies. We did the concert but things were definitely not right. Firstly, the place we played was supposed to be about 70,000 seats and so much for admission, but the promoter just opened the 100-acre site and let the whole world in. He made a number of deals, obviously, with other people without telling us, and he had probably been lying to President Marcos as well because the next day we were woken up by people saying, you're supposed to be at the palace. And we said, no, we're not. And they said, yes, you are. And they turned on the TV and the commentators were saying, well, they're still not here yet, and there were rows and rows of people in long, wide marble corridors, lines of adults and children, all dressed in their best clothes, and the live commentators were saying, well, they're still not here, the Fab Four are still not here. Could we have jumped in our black suits and gone? No, we had no chance to do that. It was the first time we had heard of it, and it was too late. So, we watched ourselves not turning up, until finally, we hadn't turned up, and the president's wife, Mrs. Marcos, had given up. Marcos himself was away. And then it was in all the papers on television and radio news, Beatles snubbed first family. It was reported really viciously, and nobody would give us cars or taxis or anything to get us to the airport. Mal and Neil were doing what they could to look after us, but all the local services were withdrawn. Somehow, we scrounged some transport to get us to the airport. Beatlemania was still going on around us, with all the kids screaming and trying to grab a hold of us, but with all the adults punching us, throwing bricks, and kicking us as we passed. The airport had flights of stairs to climb, and we had to carry all the equipment, the amplifiers, the instruments, the suitcases, and wait in line. The officials wouldn't let us through, and they encouraged the crowd. So, anyway, we finally got through that bit and went into the lounge where you wait for the plane, and then the guys showed up again. This time, they were just moving around, hitting out and going, bang! They were getting close to us. But they were hitting on our people, and I spotted that, and one said, You! Get over here! So we would move over there, and another would come up to the other side and be banging and say, Get over there! It was a matter of trying to see them all at the same time, and keep moving away from them all. Finally, we were on the plane, but we waited there for a long time, and then a call came. Would Mr. Epstein and Mr. Evans get off the plane? Mal was almost in tears, and saying, Tell Lil... I love her. Mal thought he was going to be marooned there. Then, in the end, they took most of the money off Brian, our earnings in Manila, before they would let the plane leave. That was the first time I was ever sitting on a plane saying, come on, let's go. The content on this channel is made possible from viewers like you. Help the channel grow by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.